gentleman uh, known as the Patriot Pastor. Um, he's got a family that traces their heritage to New England back almost 400 years, uh, Mr. Garrett Lear. I stand for the blue and against racism. In scripture, the rule book of the Old Testament, Ecclesiastic 10.2, a wise man's heart inclines him to the right, but a fool's heart to the left. In New Testament Romans, chapter 13, verses two and three, therefore, whoever resists the authorities, resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. You know, while we are on this point, at this point, let me in all sincerity say that there is but one race. It's the human race, and all lives matter, irrespective of what skin color one may be born with. Many people know me as a law and order guy. Some call me a holy roller. <laughs> but I've not always been like that. In my 72 years of life, I've made a lot of mistakes. Yes, I can fess up to that. In my teen years, back in the dark ages, I kind of lived on the wild side. I have burp, been perp walked in five states, mostly for fighting and racing cars, and that not on speedways. I know the feel of Smith & Wesson makers of the best handcuffs and the sight of a 38 k K-frame revolver, like I said, back in the dark ages. <laughs> the cramped space of the back seat of a cruiser or two, the unpleasantness of looking through the bars from the wrong side, you know. I have many remembrances of police officers wearing different colors of uniforms, white, green, brown, blue, tan. Officers with skin colors white, black, red, brown, and yellow. They all treated me better than I should have been treated. In two towns, Lexington, Massachusetts, and Northampton, New Hampshire, I became friendly with the chiefs there. Both spoke into my life in a positive way. Both reminded me that I was basically a good kid. And they told me if I kept doing what I was doing, I was not gonna like where I was going to end up. They attempted to guide me and scare me straight. Chief Ralph O'Connor arrested me several times for various things like trying to outrun the cops by throwing beer bottles out the window of my amazingly fast car. I had quite a few of those. I got stopped in roadblock, by the way, cop tires that didn't go flat running over glass. I do not have the time here today to tell you the whole story. Chief O'Connor called my dad, who was a decorated World War II Army veteran, to come to the town jail to get me and let me make a plea bargain. No Juby ju Hall, but I had to clean up the mess I made, clean and shine three cruisers, pick up trash at Northampton Beach, be ready and dressed properly to ride along with the chief on evening duty every night but Sunday and go to military school in September. I love that man. He was a dedicated peace and law enforcement officer that had protect and serve on his car markings. I learned so much good from him. At the military academy, they taught me who to fight, when to fight, and how to fight. I was in the ring with boxing gloves or on the wrestling mat way too often. Those were Vietnam days. I was 1A draft status, but I enlisted in ROTC with the expectation of fighting as an airborne infantry platoon leader on my way to a lifetime army career. That dream was spoiled when I incurred an injury at Fort Bragg that got me an honorable medical discharge that I literally begged them not to give me so I could stay in and go and fight for God and my country. When I got home in late August 1969, my dad wanted me to try out for the Boston Patriots. They wouldn't take me because the army discharged me because of injury. I moved around the country, tried many things, and came to realize I could serve God and my country another way, in Christian ministry. So I studied hard and long, was ordained, and became a missionary pastor, evangelist, 
American Legion chaplain, prison chaplain, chaplain to various national veteran and state and local police and patriotic organizations, including in Alaska, California, and Hawaii. 30 years ago, I came home to New Hampshire that I loved so much growing up and have stayed. I became go-to chaplain for the Northampton Police and Fire Departments in 1991. I have counseled and prayed with policemen and firemen of all ranks, colors, sizes, etc., with their families when their loved ones were injured or killed, including Greenland Chief Michael Maloney, an Army veteran, formerly Northampton Chief, who was killed trying to get a drunken and violent man with a shotgun to surrender. I have traveled to a few places outside the U.S. and have traveled and worked in all 50 states. We have the best military and police forces in the world, and I want to see them kept that way. New Hampshire has the best in the country. Every cop attends the Basics Police and Standards and Training Academy, which is overseen by a commission selected by the governor in Congress. We have standards that would impress other states. Many of the techniques elsewhere are not used as New Hampshire is genuinely concerned with the rights and proper protocol. I know many incidents where I would have, to protect myself, shot someone to stop the threat if I were in the officer's place when they did not, no matter what the news media sometimes reports. I know that it is said by some utopians that we do not need police or military. That is ludicrous, and recent events prove so. As one man told me recently when I asked him if he believed in universal disarmament, he said, that's not going to happen anytime soon because who wants to go first? <laughs> well, folks, thanks for listening so intently to my passion. There is a time prophesied in the Bible when our weapons will become converted to plowshares, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, but that is not now and not here yet. That is why the police and military are essential. I often say, what we do so well, we can do even better. Let us do that. Amen? Amen.